continuing lesson on perpendicular bisectors and uh, we reach our big theorem of the day of the lesson uh, the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle intersect at a point that is equidistant from the vertices of the triangle holy smoke that's a lot of words so let's try to break this down first some keywords here this is talking about a specific triangle okay and it's talking about concurrency which is what we just talked about before concurrency of perpendicular bisector and then it introduces a new vocabulary word the circumcenter okay, so let's see here what this is actually saying so I'm going to begin with a triangle I have triangle ABC right. now what this theorem says is that if I take the perpendicular bisector of each side, okay, so let, we're going to find uh, perpendicular bisector of each side. Okay. So that means I measure uh, this, this side here, however long that is. I take exactly half of that. This is about nine and a half, so we'll go uh, 4.25. Okay. And not only that, it has to be uh, perpendicular. So those two sides there, I'll call this point E. Okay. And this is a 90 degree angle. Then I do the same thing here with AC, so that's about nine, so we'll go to four and a half. And there's really nothing particularly special about this triangle. This theorem as it's written should work for every single uh, triangle so here I have something else that's also 90 degrees measure the side of side the length of side AB so this is about 7.2 so we'll go to about 3.6 this is point D and again if we do this correctly we use a 90 degree angle measure here and you can see that I wasn't really perfect with the other one so this is a little bit off in the drawing okay. so there we have it I have this point here uh, we will call this point G okay so G is the point of concurrency G is the point of concurrency and what this says is that the distance between let's see here it is equidistant from the vertices of the triangle so that means if I take a the point C and G sorry and go to C and then from G and go to B and then go from G and go to A that all three of these red line segments are going to be congruent. And again, this isn't, um, there's actually multiple parts of this proof, so we'll make a note here. Note, uh, the concurrency will be proved later. That's actually a very difficult and highly technical proof. So we need to first show that all three of the perpendicular bisectors will intersect and we're going to do that later okay what we're going to do so this is part one what we're going to do here is prove part two that BG is congruent to CG which is also congruent to AG and this shouldn't be uh, awfully difficult to prove um, one of the things that we we've seen before, okay, the is that this point here is on the perpendicular bisector of B C. Okay, so the proof here will be as follows. G is on perpendicular bisector of B C therefore B G 
is congruent to CG. And this is perpendicular bisector theorem or theorem 5.2 that we proved in one of the previous videos. So done. This part, okay, we already got that part, B, G, and C, G. Next, we can see that G is also on the perpendicular bisector of A, B. A, B. So then we can say that BG is congruent to AG, perpendicular bisector theorem, or theorem 5.2 that we proved before. And finally, then we can say since BG is equal to CG and BG is equal to AG, that CG then is congruent to AG as well, and this is the transitive property. And there you have it, uh, the uh, complete proof, or uh, I'm sorry, not the complete proof, but really just the second part of the proof that uh, this point here is equidistant from each one of the vertices. Okay, and if you're not quite sure why this point is useful, Go ahead and watch the next video on, on problem solving with this. Uh, you can see that it's some, some very useful examples for this. Okay. So there we have it. Uh, the idea here is nothing really special. We just reuse the perpendicular bisector theorem a bunch of times, actually twice, and it gets us to the statements that we're looking for. Okay. So now as a good exercise for yourself, you should try to, to first of all state what this theorem is saying and then try to prove it on your own. And so that's the best way to really learn and make sure that you have this um, internalized. Thank you for watching. As always, if you have problems, ask questions. Have a wonderful day.